Okay, um, we are now gonna go on to S25 and Michelle Childs is here. And Michelle, can you tell the committee what what's happening or what the problem is and why we just got this? Sure. So is it, uh, do you guys like to share the C stuff on the screen or do you like consulting your own documents or what's your pleasure? We usually put it up on the screen. Pardon? That's my screen symbol. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's Friday afternoon. You see how spin, mm -hmm. <laughs> how excited everyone is. You, you would prefer for it to be on the screen, everybody? Okay, sure. Yep. And there's a reasonable chance we're all looking at the same thing. Okay. Um, can everyone see this? I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through the underlying judiciary amendment. First. Does that work? So, um, so there are some fees in the in S25. They focus pri uh, in on two areas, and this is the addition of advertising fees for that relate to the regulation of the new cannabis establishment that will be coming online next year. Um, and so last year when Act 164 passed, um, I don't know if you recall, but there was, a, there was a discrepancy or a disagreement between the House and the Senate with regard to the advertising uh, language. And um, the Senate had put forth some, uh, a proposal the House Government Operations kind of expanded that and put that on the floor, but then on the House floor, an amendment passed banning all advertising. So I went back to the Senate and there was a conference committee established. Uh, the Senate had some real concerns around constitutional issues of doing a straight up ban of advertising. And so the agreed upon language that was in the conference committee report was for the attorney general's office, well, for the board, the cannabis control board working with the attorney general's office to report back to the general assembly this April 1st with regard to a proposal for regulating uh, the advertisements for these new cannabis establishments in a way that kind of encompasses the principles that the ad, that the General Assembly put forth, but you know to do it in a constitutionally defensible way. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a board yet, so um, getting the board up and running has uh, taken much longer than the timeline that you anticipated and put forth in Act 164, and so there's no way you know, because there's no board, there's no way obviously to get those recommendations April 1st. So what Senate Judiciary decided to do is they took the House Government Operations proposal that was voted out of that committee and sent to the floor last year. And they've encompassed, they've taken that and they've dropped that in as it passed House Government Operations and they've put that in S25. They did hear from the Attorney General's office um, that the Attorney General's office uh, approved of the language and they felt as though it was uh, defensible. And so that's what you have. So I'm not going to go through the advertising language, but I give you that backstory because one of the things that was contained in that proposal was a requirement that prior to a cannabis establishment uh, publishing their advertisements, they had to submit them to the board for review and that there would be a cannabis advertising fee associated with that. And so what you have in section three and uh, section four is uh, addressing the, the advertising fee issues solely. So if you'll see in section three in the language I have up here, and if you're following along at home, it's on page four, um, and you'll see just the, the addition of uh, the, the fees going into the cannabis regulation fund. The cannabis regulation fund is solely comprised of fees collected by the board and that fund is what runs the regulatory program. All the tax money goes elsewhere. So the program runs straight up on the fees. So they're, ad they're adding it in section three. And then section four, this is the language, the session law language that was in Act 164 that directs the board to do the reporting. And so again, um, this, is, this section is amending and adding that they would be reporting on the fees. 
Um, and then I'm going to come back, if I can, I'm going to come back to this issue uh, in a moment after Senator Pearson wants to talk to you about a, another proposal related to this, and I can tie them in together. Sir McDonald, did you have a question? No, I'm, I'm just, I was trying to find the, just trying to find the bill. The number. mute button for me. Um, no. No question. Right. Senator Sorokin, did you have a question? I do have a question. It's not related to the language, but I have a feeling it's going to be somewhat relevant to the rest of this bill. What was the requirement for when the board should have been appointed and what kind of time frame are we on now? And is there a, a potential legal challenge to the delay? Um, the timeline, which I can, I, can, I have a timeline all spelled out. I can provide that to you. The board was supposed to have been confirmed by the Senate by January 19th. So if we got the names tomorrow, we have, we have a, a confirmation period to go through too, right? Right, right. And so, um, uh, as I mentioned, there isn't, the board isn't seated yet. And um, so we are a few months behind and uh, Senator Pearson is on the nominating committee. So I would maybe defer to him if, you know, to address the issues of the whys and how long it may take to get the board seated and such. But there is, we are running at least a few months behind at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next changes, and this is a separate issue from advertising fees. Um, and this is in section 11. And so one of the things that S25 does is it uh, addresses a few issues around social equity. And uh, so you see in section 11, um, this has the <coughs> cannabis control board, um, uh, they're reporting the recommendation on fees that they are to propose a plan for reducing or eliminating license fees for individuals from communities that have historically been disproportionately impacted by cannabis prohibition or individuals directly and personally impacted by cannabis prohibition. And so that's what's in the bill. Um, the issue that I'll just set up, I think for, uh, that is a big one is because of the delays um, and because the, the General Assembly is the one that sets the fees, obviously, um, it, we're in a bit of a pickle here <laughs> um, as to whether or not it's possible to roll out the program next year because of, um, because of these delays. So. The, according to the Act 164 timeline, the board is supposed to be accepted, is supposed to finish their rulemaking and start accepting applications for the new, uh, for the new licenses um, as of uh, next spring. And um, so if the General Assembly adjourns this sure. um, and doesn't have uh, hasn't set the fees, then it's not obviously functional. Um, and so, uh, so the issue is just out there about what types of, what kind of um, tweaks to Act 164 or what, what you would include on in S25 can you do to, to still kind of hold out hope that you can still get these new cannabis businesses licensed uh, some, you know, close to the timeline that you've already set out, um, because you have to wait until obviously next January to establish the fees and then put, you'd have to push something through really quickly. Um, and that doesn't really give applicants uh, a lot of time to consider, you know, the, the costs associated with the application and the licensing process. Okay. Adam. Oh. Yes, Senator Hardy. Sorry, I think Senator Pearson's been trying to talk for a while, so I'll see Okay, I know there. Senator Pearson has some proposed language, so do oh. you have a question before? I do have a question. If uh, so On the social equity fee part of it, Michelle, is 
Sure. Is there a definition anywhere for individuals that have been impacted by prohibition or anything, or is it self-certified or how, how do, how no, do we there there isn't, and this has been, um, I imagine if, if y'all and other committees have been kind of grappling with how do you uh, identify uh, this, this group, um, it's been a little tricky for folks. There, uh, elsewhere in the bill, it's, there's the creation of a cannabis business development fund, um, and uh, they specifically use a term around social equity applicants. But what they've done in S25 is have the advisory committee that's within the board be making recommendations as to who qualifies as a social equity applicant, but that definition doesn't exist yet. And um, so, uh, and there's just been a lot of discussion around how do you identify for who should qualify for the reduced fees and they don't wanna wait to get a report back or anything like that. They want it to be able to be um, to, to, for you to guys to be able to consider those reduced or eliminated fees as soon as possible. And so there isn't a definition of that, but the, the goal was to, to not um, limit it to just race or just people who might have a prior conviction or things like that, because it could, there could be a wide array of ways in which someone was negatively impacted by this prohibition and so they wanted to leave it to leave it a little bit open so it would be up to the board to be making the recommendation about who they think qualifies under that okay so there may be some kind of application process or certification process or at least a definition process that the board yes will with. okay yes great yeah thank you yes. yep okay senator pearson um so just a question for Michelle, and then I'm happy to get into my issue if you're ready, Madam Chair. Yes, I think so. You, I think you said uh, when you were talking about the timeline that um, the original, the law lays out this fee thing that the board was supposed to come to the legislature, I think April 1st, and then um, start issuing permits. And you said, I, I think you said next spring, but actually, if I recall, some of the permits get issued, you know, for the grows and other processors um, sooner than that, right? Because the idea, as we conceived, was that stores, at least integrated licenses, could open as early as April 22. Right. right. I, I can't remember if they start accepting application. I think they start accepting applications March 1st of next year. Okay. Um, except for the small, the small. I'm from Georgia. So I still think of March and spring, although I realize it doesn't count. Up. Sorry. <laughs> it's small because there's some permits that start getting issued or accepted. So you need to have a fee, I think, by the time you accept an application, mm -hmm. which is different from granting a permit. And I thought some of the permits might even be uh, applications might come start coming in this fall um, in order. No, am I I'm no. totally misread? Okay. No, I can email uh, all of y'all in faith the, the timeline while, while we're discussing. Senator Hardy, among others, will like that because it's a good chart, if I recall. Okay. Um, yes, thank you. So um, the details of the timing are important. The details of the fees, uh, the committee will remember the fees are supposed to support the regulation, the board itself, their own staffing and infrastructure. They uh, are meant to and imagine to be offering different fees for different licenses. Uh, and then even some of those licenses, say a growing license would have different tiers, it's been imagined. And obviously if you have a, a big grow, it's different fee than if you have a, a, a thousand square foot grow. Um, the reason that we have wrestled with setting the fees is that we have wrestled with how, my, how many kinds of businesses do we want? Do we want to have five big ones and a hundred little ones, et cetera, et cetera. Figuring that balance out is tricky. Then figuring out how many you think we need versus how much money do we need to raise to get this whole thing going is even more tricky. 
What we face now is the choice of either us figuring it out or not doing anything and losing an entire year where the board would come back to us in January for us to approve the fees. Neither of them seem practical to me. We don't have the capability, I don't think, to figure it out uh, because there's so many interconnected pieces. And I'm not interested, and I don't think others are interested, now that we've taken this leap, in losing another year. So what, um, and Michelle has kindly drafted some language, what I would propose we do is maintain that structure where the board comes up with a proposal for the fees. But since they, we won't be around to then approve them, they bring those, that, those proposed fees, which are temporary fees for the first year, to the joint fiscal committee. And only after the fiscal committee acts to approve them would those fees go into place so that the board could start accepting applications. Um, so that's the concept that what we've got, Michelle and Anthea can walk us, uh, Anthea can walk us through how it goes, but that's what I'm hoping we can do uh, because, and, and if we don't wanna do it here, we could potentially still do it this year. But I like that this becomes the cannabis sort of update bill and, and is webbed together. And I think that has some benefits for us as we head to the other body. Um, so anyway, that's the concept and, and uh, appreciate folks thinking about it. Okay, committee, any questions? I'm not seeing any. Michelle, can you put the new wording up? Or Senator Hardy. I was just gonna ask if we could go through the amendment because. There's a lot crossed out and I was wondering what's crossed out and what's new. So. Sure. Did you want me to just show you the timeline real quick on some of those dates or just go straight to the amendment? Senator Hardy? <laughs> if you sent us the timeline, I can look at it on my own or on the side. Okay. If, 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 everyone else is okay if, if you send it to Faith, she'll send it to us. Yep. And uh, I send it to all of y'all as well as to Faith. And um uh, they start accepting applications in April 1st of next year. And that is because we have to wait for the board to go through the rulemaking process, adopt the rules and um, uh, in order so that everybody knows what rules they're, they're applying under. So, um, okay, I will share, uh, sorry, I have two. Okay, so you should have um, Senator Pearson's amendment up. I drafted it as a committee amendment just because I know everybody, everything's moving fast right now. Um, so, uh, so what this does is it strikes the, the uh, section four in the judiciary proposal of amendment, which that section is amending section five of act 164 from last year that required the board to report to you on April 1st. So they can't do it. So it essentially strikes, strikes that language. So if you see there and starting on line um, 19 is all of that language that struck through is all the, all the stuff around fees that they were supposed to report to you on. But no, don't worry because it's coming back in the second instance of amendment in section 4A. And the alternative we came up with for your consideration is for the recommendations to go to the joint fiscal committee instead of the general assembly. And so you'll see there um, uh, the new section 4A and subsection A is that on or before August 1st of this year, the board would provide draft recommendations to the Joint Fiscal Committee for its approval on the following. And then there's just the same list of items um, that was contained in Act 164 for reporting, plus the new language on line 13 and 14 for including the advertising review fee. And uh, so they would report to the committee uh, as of August 1st. Um, Then on subsection B, 
you'll see on, I'm sorry, I can't see my page numbers with the split screen, but you'll see that within 30 days of receiving the proposal from the board, the committee shall review the recommendations at its regularly scheduled meeting and provide feedback to the board for any suggested changes. And then C, the board shall revise the proposal if necessary to incorporate the committee's recommendations and present a revised draft for approval to the committee at its next regularly scheduled meeting. And D states that uh, the fees are to take effect upon approval by the committee. So the, the committee has to approve them and then they'll take effect. Um, and then after that, so that's just kind of a stopgap measure for this year so that the whole program doesn't come to a halt because there aren't any fees. In the future, it'll just be part of the regular fee bill process. So it's Okay, just, Michelle, yep. I'm trying to line up the dates. They have until August 1st to report to joint fiscal. Yes. Memory serves me. Joint fiscal meets in July and November. I'm not sure clear if we have a meeting in October. So if it doesn't come in until August, we can't do it until November. I just want to make sure we get the dates. Sure, clear. I didn't realize they, I thought they had, that they met more frequently, but that was. Uh, uh, th this past year we met weekly. So I'm kind of. Right. Um, thrown off the rate. We may have a regular meeting in October. I mean, but you don't, I just, I just created that. I mean, you could say the board shall have a meeting specifically on this. I mean, you could put it for the July meeting, but again, with, there's no board. Let's, yeah, no, let, so let's, there will be. let's just say they shall consider it. Joint fiscal shall consider it. Well, let's, let me try emailing Steve Klein or Catherine and asking when we meet. Or I can look it up. So keep going and I'll. Okay, so the timing, obviously you can play around with that. You just wanna make sure that. We, would we be safer to, I see what you're doing, Michelle. And, and I liked the idea of you, you don't wanna force them to meet specially, but you also don't want the legislature suddenly to start delaying and so you've said within 30 days of receiving the proposal which keeps a little heat on the joint fiscal committee but if we took that 30 days out then um you know and, and frankly took out regularly scheduled meeting then you've left it firmly in the hands of the fiscal committee mm -hmm. and, and we're not in trouble if they meet on the 35th day or something um sure be wiser, Madam Chair? Yeah, I've just sent an email to Steve Klein just a asking. There may there may well be one in October. And if there is, then if it comes in in August, we can do one in October and one in November. I also wonder, Michelle, about just saying September 1st, because there's a lot of work that goes in before they craft these, and it wouldn't shock me if joint fiscal didn't meet in august so no we don't meet in august we meet in july usually the end of july so let's may i suggest we make it september 1st we take out that 30-day stopwatch and we just take out the regular scheduled meeting so that we're not binding ourselves in any weird way that we don't quite mean to and that way we give the board a little bit more time and we make sure that the joint fiscal committee doesn't inadvertently trip some calendar, but we still have ourselves, uh, you know, we're not stuck in this weird time where we don't have anything uh, sorted out because of the messed up timeline. This is an S bill, right? Yes. So if there's an, yeah, if there's a problem, it can get corrected. Okay. Are people uh, comfortable with those modifications? So we, we make it September 1st, we take out the within 30 days and we take out regularly scheduled meetings so that it's just a little more fluid.
I'm I'm fine with that as long as Madam Chair, since you're on the committee, <laughs> you're okay with that. I mean, knowing that this isn't the last stop, I'm okay with leaving it the way it is. And if it turns out the timeline doesn't work, given the history of cannabis bills, that'll be the least of the problems to correct. Um, you know, there's time to correct it. What happened? I don't know if, yeah, if Steve Klein is sitting there watching his email, anticipating my missive. So, uh, Sandra Sorotkin. What happens if the, the names of the board are further delayed? I mean, at some point, we're just pushing into January in terms of this question. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we're trying to we're we're trying not to just sort of uh, back into being a year late. That's that's my goal. So if the board gets named, this gives us time to move forward in our present time frame. If the board doesn't get named, then we got a whole new kettle of fish here. Which is does the, that work? The existing law, one that the legislature has to approve these fees. Is that the way it works now? Yes. Yeah, they're to bring them to us by April 1st. So that would be a remarkable right. fee. McDonald. Um, Madam Chair, I believe existing uh, law is that all fees must be approved by the legislature. Um, I recount, um, I recounted a, a past time when the legislature went and um, passed a statute that said that the taxes would be X if the federal government did Y when we were absent. And that was challenged on its constitutionality. But before the court, this case was heard, the legislature had resumed in January and, and retroactively, uh, you know, and had approved the fees that had been established that had been challenged. So I would suspect that um, I don't believe we can, or maybe we can, but uh, authorize- we Delegate fees. our taxing yeah. authority, but I'm not sure that fees are there. And, and yeah, you joined us. Can you help us? I brought in a consider. <laughs> So uh, for the record, Anthea Dexter Cooper from the Office of Legislative Counsel filling in for Becky Wasserman who needed to be someplace else. And we said not to draft a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> uh, so I'm here exclusively to answer this question and I uh, consulted with Becky um, in advance. Um, I am not aware of the specific case that you are um, speaking of, but it does sound like it had to do with the authority to tax. Um, based on language in 32 VSA section 603 subdivision one, and you'll see in the language that Michelle put up, um, that's what's being not withstood here. It says any new fees shall be established solely by act of the General Assembly, which will designate the service or product provided or regulatory function performed for which the fee is to be charged. So one, we're not withstanding that. Two, it's within the General Assembly's authority to set fees, which is being delegated to the Joint Fiscal Committee. That is more specific than this general, the General Assembly must um, set fees. So the specific supersedes the general. And there are sort of two instances setting aside the fact that the Joint Fiscal Committee has been used um, for the fee process um, in other instances, which is where this language is partially drawn from. Uh, in subdivision two, certain recalculations of fees is left to the Joint Fiscal Committee in the ordinary course. And the approach that's being taken with the Joint Fiscal Committee being sort of as the seal of approval of the General Assembly writ large when you're not um, in session is similar to the process that was taken with the CRF money um, with the Joint Fiscal Committee sort of going through this money going back into the pot, redistributing which as your chair mentioned is, is why the Joint Fiscal Committee uh, met so much over the last year. So we do think um, that this is something that is within the General Assembly's power to delegate to Joint Fiscal and it would be within Joint Fiscal Committee's power to 
approve the fees under the sort of revamped timeline structure in the amendment. Madam Chair, that silenced me. That is a first, Senator. Uh, and <laughs> and Pia, can you anyone... stay with us for a while? Nice um, job, Anthea. Going... That is my sole answer. Michelle has all of the other answers, or we'll find them for you. This was my. I just want you to, to silence and... Senator McDonald so we can get out of here before midnight. And in the uh -oh. event that uh, someone challenges, the legislature will probably come back in January and forestall the court case. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Madam and... Chair, for bringing in the witness. Hallelujah. And you are then providing a little bit of sort of consistency for the um, individuals who would be applying for these applications. And I think um, Michelle said April as to what those fees are apt to be if it does turn out, and we don't think it would, that it would need to be something that the General Assembly would adopt. Okay. So, so, I, um, so I did uh, make those amendments as uh, Senator Pearson just suggested. Do you want me to pop those up on the screen just so you can see them? And there you go. Okay. So um, you'll see there, so changing the August 1st to September 1st. And then going down here and just instead of saying, um, within the 30 days, say upon receiving the proposal, the committee, uh, oops, regularly scheduled, that's gotta go, sorry. Um, and provide feedback to the board and then see, uh, I took out the language around the regularly scheduled meeting, so. Okay. Great, and, and Michelle, you, for the committee's knowledge, you know, it's a little tricky. It's a little bit like the rules. When we're reviewing rules, the legislature can't direct changes, but um, clearly here, the, the, the committee has to approve them. So if they say, geez, why didn't you do X, Y, and Z? The board will be able to say, here's the updated version of our recommendation with X, Y, and Z. And so the, the power retains with the, the Joint Fiscal Committee are, are sort of acting on our behalf. Um, so I thought that was well crafted as trying to, to hold on to that balance and not you know, trip us up as much as we could think it through. And I had shared with Senator Pearson that something similar happens with the legislative review of judicial rules. So the uh, Joint Judicial Rules Committee has the ability to object to proposed court rules, um, but to try to avoid um, a last minute objection and stalemate, there's, there's usually a dialogue between the court and the legislature and they send the proposed rules over and legislators can say, eh, this, we'd like a tweak to that. And then they go back and then they come back with it, um, so. It is the most is. boring committee I have ever <laughs> served on as a non-lawyer. I think it was my first year. <laughs> it's, yeah. It is a bit of a niche. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I mean, if you're not a lawyer, you just kind of sit there and your head spins. It's as Even bad if as you are. You, yes, if you are, it, you like to get into that, but um, it was also, as much. I did want to let you know is that um, uh, this is based loosely on an, uh, something in existing law under Title 22 with regard to the Vermont State Web Portal. Is there's a process there and that was established uh, in I think Section 953 for something kind of similar to this, where they're recommending things to Joint Fiscal Committee. Joint Fiscal Committee has the ability to approve or reject. So it's not exactly like that, but just as another kind of some support for that this isn't creating something new that you've never done before. Okay, committee, what's your pleasure? Madam Chair, can I ask a question of yes. Michelle? Is this the only thing in this bill that 
is relevant to the finance committee that we that we have to deal with today or is there something else it's just the okay yep thanks well the the advertising fee the reduction okay. fee for dis, historically disadvantaged and then this proposal on top of that okay but those two fees would be sort of incorporated into this process right yeah mm -hmm. okay are all those provisions in in draft 2.1, 12, 10 p.m.? I've got 3.2. 3.2. Okay. Okay. Draft 3.2, 12 p.m. on the 12th, or would have a different? Uh... Uh, 3.2. 3.17 p.m. I haven't emailed that out to folks. I just did it while we were talking. So the one here says 3.19, 2021. That's the same date. It's at 3.17 is the time. Okay, 3.19. Thank you. Okay. But I need a motion. I uh -huh. think that... Madam Chair, I'm happy to move that uh, the committee amend, approve, well, no, amend S25 as it came to us with draft 3.2. Okay. Further discussion? If not, I think, Michelle, if you take that down, I can actually sure. see if they're voting. Sorry. I have to see them so they can vote. All right. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Are there seven of us here? Yeah. So that carries 700. And Senator Pearson, I assume you're going to be the reporter. Sure. Happy to. Okay. And that it be reported favorably when so amended? Oh, yes. Ah, yes. yes. You yes. made that motion, right? Okay. Yes. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, hearing no negatives, that carries 700, and we will send it to Senator Pearson. We can send it to Secretary Bloomer. Um, and that's it. Um, we were looking at a really light week next week, but I think we'll try and start working through some of Steve Whitaker's issues and that might tie up very well with the telecom plan that's coming. Um, I'm going to set a bar at the last three years maybe. I'm not going back to sins of 1987, um, but to see if we can figure out if there's something we can do going forward short of requiring the governor to put more people in there, which I think would help. Um, you got three people uh, in the, you know, the commissioner's got two and herself working on broadband, which may be a source of some of the problems, but we shall see. So have a good weekend. Um, we'll see everybody on Tuesday. At least that's my plan at this point. For me, uh, if I'm not here, I'll be in touch with Senator McDonald. <laughs>